Now, if you found yourself in Lightroom editing your photos and you're wanting to add some drama to your images, then this is the video for you. I can see you doing it now, scrolling through the different tools to edit your photos and going straight past the tone curve panel. Now, don't worry, lots of people do the same, but it's actually a really powerful and easy tool to help you add a bit of drama and interest to the lighting in your photos. So why do people avoid it? Well, it's not quite clear exactly what it's used for. Unlike some of the sliders that you have in Lightroom, they have a description, whereas the tone curve doesn't really say much about what it is, and therefore I think it's easy to overlook. But don't worry, that is exactly what we're gonna clear up in this video. I'm gonna break it all down for you here now, so let's get into it. In the tone curve panel, make sure you have this button selected, which is for the point curve. I'll cover the different types later, but for now, this is all you need. The tone curve represents the light in your image and how it's distributed. It's split into whites, highlights, midtones, shadows, and blacks. You can easily add a point in the curve and raise or lower it just by clicking and dragging the mouse, and you'll see the effect that it's having on your image in real time. If you want to reset a point, you can just double click it, and the graph in the background is showing you where the data in your image sits in relation to the sections that I just listed. For example, here, the graph is way over to the right, and we can see that the image is overexposed because most of the information sits in those highlights and whites. But now, if we look at an image where all the data is on the left, then as you would expect, it's quite underexposed because it's all in the shadows and blacks. Now there's no right or wrong tone curve, but as a general rule, we're usually aiming to have a nicely balanced image with a nice bit of contrast through the darks and the lights. Of course, we wanna avoid having the image too pale and gray because that just looks too boring, but at the other end of the scale, if we go too far, then we lose information in the darker areas and in the light areas. Now this is the fun part because you get to experiment. Imagine that you're shooting a darker, moody sort of tone in your image. Then you can use the tone curve down in the bottom left-hand corner and start manipulating that curve so that the image looks exactly how you want. Here, you can see I'm making a point at the darkest part of the image and then raising it to give a slightly vintage or cinematic tone. I might then tweak the slightly less darker areas to avoid it being too harsh until I'm happy with how it's looking. So in this photo, I'll make just a few general adjustments to the curve and some basic edits to the overall exposure to see if we can improve its tone and mood. And now we can look at the difference. So just by tweaking a few things, we've made a big impact on that shot. And that's before we've gone into any of the color toning or the other adjustments in Lightroom. Also, a really cool quick tip on this is that if you want to adjust just a specific part of your image, but you don't quite know which area it falls into, you can use this picker tool to identify where it sits in the tone curve and target your adjustments accordingly. If you click in the area, it will even create the point for you. Now I did say earlier that I would cover the other types of curve here. Now they're really simple and they work in exactly the same way. So the first one here is the parametric curve. And the only real difference with this one is that it limits the amount of adjustment you can make to try and keep things simple and avoid any unwanted extremes. You can also make the adjustments using these sliders here, but you've learned how to use the point curve, which has all the control you need. These other three options are for the three color channels of red, green, and blue. Now these three probably do warrant a video of their very own, but I will run through the basic principles of them, which is pretty much the same as what you have just been through with the previous curves. For example, in the red channel, you can add more or less red to the dark or light areas of your image. The key thing to remember here is that each channel has an opposite color, which is nicely represented in this graph area. The opposite of red is cyan, the opposite of green is magenta, and the opposite of blue is yellow. You see, that wasn't so hard, was it? Now, if you learn anything in this video or you have some more questions, then please let me know below and I'll get back to you. Aside from that, go and adjust some curves.